I guess I shouldn't show that on the internet too much sexual appeal. Uh, just kind of giving you a ballpark estimate of what I'm up to. See that there clouds and all that. That's what we're working on right now. Working on all. I'm not gonna do all of them, but I'm trying to get started on the flying shots and get some cohesion to the film. Cohesion is that's a term in film. Uh, if you study film, there's something called cohesion, in which a film has to have a a sense of. Uh, uh, of, of, of interconnectivity it seems like everything it makes sense and in, in, in sequence and uh, flows together and doesn't jar anyone out of the film and I could just release the movie I'm making the way it is and it would just you know not really have that uh, that last un, you know it wouldn't make any sense because nothing made uh, nothing had any actual flow logic to it so if I don't put this stuff in it will make sense and that's the point I'm making uh, yeah you know you want to do certain things when you are in this position and you're trying to get some work done you're like I don't want to do this crap I don't want to work I'm making a better lighting on this side uh. We are in interesting times, man. Interesting times. I mean, like right directly after we start having some good vibes going and people looking forward to more Star Wars movies and, you know, people generally getting around to having a good time in life. You know, we're in depression mode right now. We're in a situation where there's just, there's no hope. People are hopeless. And, uh... I don't know what to tell anyone. I've been alive a long time. When I was way back. When I was around these kids' age, the Parkland shooting kids, I was, you know, in school doing my stuff. I remember exactly. I was in Spanish class. And, you know, I hated school. I, 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 know, I had no love for that. And, you know, you hear about... It wasn't. It was. It, it, I, I don't remember what the the uh, circumstances were. I can't recall how things. Did I? Did I, I? I don't know exactly what what the whole what my day was like on September 11th. But yeah, there was a lot of. Uh, it made it, it. It had an impact. That situation. The. Whole thing it had an it had an impact on uh, on my school day, and you know we all kind of heard about it and saw what happened on TV, and that was a huge you know serious uh, situation for us back then to to get a whiff of like real like. Never, you never would have thought you'd witness. I saw that stuff. I saw all of it. I saw it on the TV, and you know, it, it's amazing that I'm here in the Bronx, and Manhattan's only an hour away, and and that kind of stuff, that kind of serious level stuff, happened only so many miles away, and yet it, up up here anyway, back where I'm living in the Bronx, we just went back to life after that day and you know we, we all talked about it but nothing really happened nothing really changed about our lives we just kind of went right back to the grind of school and i can understand what they're going through because you know once these traumatic events happen that the the, the 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 businesses and everything's not going to stop for nothing nobody's going to take a moment to say let's think about what's happened the trauma that people might be... Let's talk about it. Nobody really seriously did that. Uh, when I was back around my day, we didn't really do that kind of thing. So, I never addressed the topic, and it became more of a political ping-pong uh, ball. You know? And it was the reason why the whole war in Iraq happened and all this stuff happened. And... A lot of 
we didn't have YouTube back then. We didn't have the cell phone cameras we have now. I can imagine it would have been a different world altogether if we had that back then. And we could actually, nobody would make no conspiracy theories about it because they have footage from people's cell phones. I mean, imagine if you found the cell phones of the people inside of the tower when it came down. We didn't have no cell phone that could like quick a quick video or nothing back then. But imagine after all the dust clears you somebody put their cell phone inside of a, a safe inside of the top floor. And he knew that it would be his last will and testament to the world. So he put it in there. And uh after the whole building fell down they looked inside of that safe and they found a cell phone. They looked on the cell phone's video hard drive and they found Tons and tons of video of everybody on the top floors and their experience and the last moments of their lives. That would have been super interesting. So now we have that. We have actual video of the kids in the school getting bullets flying everywhere. And we we're ground zero to their war-like experience. They've been through war, you know. And that's an interesting thing. We have war machines, we have all that stuff that's supposed to just be somewhere else, and it's doing its thing, and it's blowing up and killing this, and you never really have it right here next to you. I have been to the war machine. I have seen what the war machine is, and I have shot guns. And so now they know who I am. They know kind of what I've been through and that they, they they're they're warriors now they're soldiers you know I can I can tell you after you've been through the war machine and you've had your you've been in a fight or flight death or fight situation you've got that baptism on the fire it does change you and you will be a person who's just not the same no more and they've been through that war machine and you know I don't think you could mess with them you know what I mean Mr. Mr. Crap himself, the president, talking about he would have gone in there and done something to 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 kick the shooter's ass or whatever. It's talk. Once you in that shit, once you in the bullets flying and you got the guy there right there ready to kill you, he's not gonna say, not gonna back up, he's not gonna hesitate, and you know it's you or him. That's war. That whole thing, you know, that 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 mentality that human instinct to fight or flee once you get to that point and you you know people walk around all day not doing not feeling like they're in a life and death situation so that part of our instinct is kind of depressed a lot in society here civilian society but out there when you are in war you will be changed you will be completely primal in a sense and you'll change back to a beast of, of the human animal and that's what these these people are experiencing. They're going through post traumatic stress. I'm pretty sure they are. I mean, they were just going to school talking about tits and butts and all the things they do and whatever the hell school work they're going through. High school is like this. It's not about the school work. It's about the people you get to screw. And that's you know it's not that different from life itself. You know I don't know why it is such a big deal about high school years it's just legal paperwork bull crap it's the same thing you're trying to get girlfriend trying to get a boyfriend is that's that's it when i was back there in school that's all i wanted to do pound some booty i don't know why there's this magical mystical time in your life called high school that's different from every other time in your life i don't know i don't know when you go to college you want to pound some booty when you go to high school, you want to pound some booty. When you go get a job, you want to pound some booty. It's the same thing, different places. I'm not going to touch that. Too many people ready to jump on you about that subject, so whatever. But, yeah, I can, I can't, uh, I can definitely say that it's interesting to watch what they're going through because I've been there. You know, you know it's like, that way, they, you know, they just got a huge wake-up call, man. This world rough. This world rough. Uh, it's just people gonna eat you alive in this world. Some people live their life looking for that, and some people don't and want to be peaceful. Well, you're gonna you're gonna meet all kinds. And uh, in my case, I mean, I really don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. 
And a lot of people do not like me and want me gone and all that crap. So I'm getting hurt too. And they're getting the news now that the world is a very strange, complicated place. So, but anyway, I just wanted to show off the stuff I'm working on. Since it came out really fantastic, uh, this is it. I will be, I worked, I worked tirelessly on this shot. It came out actually really well, I think. This is not real, yet it's kind of going to look real when it's all said and done. Yeah, it kind of looks real, doesn't it? So this is Static Shock's first flight. This is it. This is the initial flight of Static Shock. He will be going into the sky. And uh, I green screened a bunch of stuff of me going up into the sky. And I'm going to try to cut it off right there and get him up in the sky faster. Because right now it doesn't look much sense. Angularly. But it's it's a good little, little proto, you know, a uh, uh, proof of... Uh, concept right now very good proof of concept it's a it's pretty darn good uh, showcase of what I'm trying to do and uh, my After Effects keeps keeps on crashing but so far so good I gotta mask out that little bit I didn't think I need a green screen at the top because it was the sky I figured okay since it's the sky it'll just blend in with the background I didn't think, but that's okay. I can fix that. I'm gonna go in. Is I don't move my head. If I was doing all kinds of crap with my head, it would be so much more complicated to do. I'm gonna mask it out. The bottom looks fantastic. Typically, when I do this stuff, I have to mask out my feet, cut the board out, and then put the board back in. And make it look like, a, or just completely remove the saucer I tried to use and put in a completely different saucer, and then we we'd go from there. We'd have to latch it all together. This is like this is terribly complicated stuff when you do this stuff. So I just wanted to do some sort of little vlog right now since I don't really do it that much. I'm typically posting to the blog. I'm still working on this thing. It's been five years. I started doing it in 2013, but I can guarantee you that with some real hard grease and, and grit down and working very hard on these shots and getting them ready to go, you can see how good that one turned out. We will be able to get this thing free and easy out onto YouTube on the, uh, the release of the date, of, release date of Solo. I'm gonna try to sync it up right then and there. When that movie comes out, this movie will be out. In that sense. Just watch my movie after you see Solo or before you see Solo or whatever you want to do. And uh, it is a good movie. It took five years to make. So it's very, it's a passion project. It's got that kind of attitude to it. I've seen a lot of Static Shock projects and they're just things that guys make, you know, besides, you know, whatever the hell they're doing today. They just decided to make something. They're not really serious about it. In my case, this is really something that I've been dreaming of doing for a while. And it it needs to be done. I think that since we're on like the freaking sixth Spider-Man movie now, or we just keep making Batman movies, keep making all these things. Black, I'm going to go see Black Panther because it tells Hollywood, stop it. Make movies with black people in it. Make movies with other people in it. Not, you know, we have freaking six Spider-Man movies. You're not going to get it right. You're going to keep failing. Please, give give other races a shot. That's all I'm saying. I don't, I don't look at things from a racial perspective like most people do. But it is very off-putting to me that, you know, there isn't any, like, sh nothing black superheroes going on. Like, nothing. It's just like... That's just, there are super smart, highly skilled, professional, black professionals in this world. And you're not going to throw them a bone and a movie. It's wrong. So I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't look at race. I, I've never looked at race. You know, I've always been like, I like something that's good quality wise, you know. 
that's it. I'm not thinking about the blacks and the whites and, and you know race to me is just it's meaningless. I don't I don't think anybody cares about it anymore. It's stupid. But yeah, in this case it's getting ridiculous. We're getting so many freaking white movies, this and that, and it's like there's nothing black. And what? You know, it's like, what? You know, to me, uh, I, I grew up on black superheroes and things. I couldn't get away from them. There was too many, you know, so to have it today, because you know what it is? You know what it is? The people in charge of the, the systems now, the movie industry and all that stuff, they grew up. And wherever they come from, they never they never have no black people around. I don't know what. They probably come from La La Land, uh, Greenland, or Iceland, or whatever freak. So they go and they get to that top job, and they're in the world of making these big superhero movies, and the only thing they're going to make is the things they know. And that's why these movies are all about the, the white society and white lifestyle. So, it is not their fault. They just have, they don't have any sensibilities towards black culture, black life, and haven't really hung out with black people ever, and don't really know black people, and, and so they don't make movies about them. Simple as that. So, um, I'm gonna check out. I'm, I, I well, I've watched a bit of Black Panther. I have watched. I've read the reviews of it. I agree with a lot of the reviews. It's just a okay movie to a lot of people it's not a movie that truly does much to you know break any barriers you know i watched a lot of softball black movies in my day i haven't really seen a lot of only only hardcore black movies that i've ever watched was city of god and my cousin uh showed me that way back when i was in florida i don't know why but I think he wanted to let me see what happens if they actually take black circumstances seriously in a film and make a film about that instead of making a softball black movie where they just have the blacks and the whites get along at the end of the movie after having a smidge of racial tension. City of God didn't play. It showed black people of all kinds. And of course the protagonist of the film is... He's not this black kid who dreams of being white. He's this black kid who dreams of trying to get out of his impoverished situation. Because his character basically exists because his society is so dark. He's decided to counter that and try to rise above it. And a lot of characters try to rise above the situation they're in in that movie and don't make it. I probably should check. I I don't like watching these depressing ass movies, man. Like Beasts of No Nation. When I was in the university, that's all they would show you. They show you, they bait you. You know, they show you the Shrinking Man, they show you Frankenstein, they show you all these movies that are like you know funny films. And then they go and then one day they brought they brought us all into a room and they showed us all freaking dark, horrific, terrible film about the horrors of of being uh imprisoned in a, in a in a third world country you know india or something like that it's a white guy that goes and gets imprisoned in in an in a indian people country and and he, he goes insane in the prison he becomes gay in the prison because he's he, he's no there's no women there so he turns gay that's the kind of movie that they showed us because why i don't know and i don't want to watch that crap you know, I've seen I've seen Brokeback Mountain. I've seen it. I didn't, you know, I, I enjoyed that movie. I love Brokeback Mountain. You know, I'd rather watch a movie like that. And then, then one where there's fighting and terribleness and making the world seem terrible. You know, the world is terrible. I know it's terrible. I grew up in it. It sucks. So don't need to watch a movie about it. But, uh, I don't want to go on forever. Anyway, I'm going to get this up on YouTube. And uh, we got to make it, man. The middle part is easier to edit than the rest of that, that I've been doing for so long. I've screwed up. If you make a movie, ever, 
organize every single thing from the start. If you're going to make scenes and stuff like that, put them in folders. I figured in my dumbass head, okay, just throw it in the folder. Throw it in the folder. I don't care what it is. And then I went to start editing, and it's like I took days, two days. I said, okay, let me find this file. It took two days to find the file, you know. So that slowed it down to a slug's pace. And everything was terrible trying to get it done. So now uh, I'm just trying to get this thing going. And uh, as long as this thing survives the pressure I'm putting it under, this isn't even the hardest stuff I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing shots for I'm going to be going in the tunnels and my the opacity and the uh, shadows and stuff are going to have to show up on the body. So I'm going to have to darken everything on the fly. And I'm going to make some very dynamic, complicated, uh, hopefully good stuff. And... Uh, I, you know, I did the whole Han Solo trailer thing, and, you know, other people stole my idea, and they put their own, they did their own spin on the trailer, and they didn't do it as good as me, and, you know, it's, it's, it's disappointing to see that, you know, I worked for, like, a very long time, worked very hard on the, on the remix of the trailer, and then I get 40-something views, the guy who just kind of meh worked on it oh he got front page on gizmodo yeah so that was like what but i never got no recognition for the stuff i made back in the day so same old same old i wish i was younger though not this friggin age and I'm still doing this stuff um i'm a, you know it's depressing what's going on. Uh, I don't think they should be like trying to use the internet, Twitter as therapy to cook to, to to deal with their situation. The internet is is full of very evil sons of bitches. You don't want to play with that. But you know, you know, you you, you mess with the internet. The internet's gonna like me. I didn't put my face on the internet back when I was younger. I didn't have a webcam at all. I couldn't do shit like that. So nobody actually knew what age I was when I posted at message boards and stuff like that. It was just me. And I was one of the more intelligent sounding people at the forum. But of course you come across somebody who's much, much smarter and older than you and things get complicated because you are younger you are less experienced and don't know anything and there's a guy who comes along who's who's gonna be ruthlessly you know trying to kick your ass and, and so the shit goes down in that sense so I'm gonna get back to work and uh, we're gonna see what happens here I'm, 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 I'm going to get my proton pack in the mail, and I need to sell off a couple of things, like my camera, I think, I'll sell some stuff, try to make enough money. I don't know whether to mod the pack or not, because if I mod it, the people who mod stuff, most likely what they're modding it for is for fan films. They're going to be making a GB fan film, they're going to go out and actually... You know, do the effects and all that stuff, and I need a, a really good, accurate-looking pack. Uh, I see on the internet now. I'm going on forever with this, but I see so many people making proton packs, and it is like, wow. I'm not the only one who dreamed of that, and um, I wish I could buy one. If they're gonna, if they know how to make that thing, sell it for like a hundred. Three two hundred dollars flat to somebody. Instead, you go online, you see people selling packs for two thousand dollars. I know how much it costs to make a pack. It does not cost two thousand dollars to make a good, accurate screen, accurate pack with the bells and whistles and lights and all that stuff in it. And the pack doesn't even do anything. If you actually made it into a a, a boombox, a radio, 
something useful. Yeah, I can understand you selling it for a high price. Instead, it's just a, a, a prop replica with some lights built into it. And you're selling for two thousand dollars. Something that if you have at least two hundred dollars, you can go and make yourself. Just go out, get the wood, get the bits you need. It's all it's gonna cost two hundred dollars. Paint. You got it. Done and done. I researched that thing day and night how to build a proton pack, and all of the things I've read said about two hundred dollars to do it. So to have these eBay listings for freaking two thousand dollars is ludicrous crap. It's ludicrous. But that's people man you know, no, you be very careful when you're using the eBay and all that there's some assholes selling stuff that's cheap anywhere else for way too much and that's all I'm going to say thank you and uh, see you uh, when this thing gets somewhat closer to being done